Hello there. Welcome to uh, another episode of Pollitt's Projects. And don't worry, I know you're looking at this shot of me driving and thinking, oh my God, is he extending this channel to his 2012 Ford C-Max? Well, no. No, I'm not. The C-Max is a, uh, a means to a project-based end today. We're currently on the M25, and I say we because my cameraman Mark is beside me. He will be driving this home because we are picking up another project. But what project am I picking up? Well, last week on Twitter, I asked what people thought of the uh, W210 Mercedes-Benz E-Class. And as you can see from these tweets, the uh, response was less than optimistic. Hmm. Seems people don't like them. So, naturally, I've bought one. I found it on eBay. It was £995. It's an E200, so that's an E-Class with the engine from a sewing machine. Um, but one owner from me, 90,000 miles, full service history, it's got a bit of MLT left. It's a bit visually challenged, um, but it should be a good project. It should be a good base for a bit of a transformation and bringing it back to its former glory. You never know, might put some sick wheels on it and lower it and put some fat based speakers in it so that I can listen to German techno. I believe those are the rules when you have an executive German saloon car. So we're just on our way now to Luden Automotive over in... Oh, in Essex, mate! No, I mean, down here. Here, don't for cushioning. it. No, I mean, down here. Um, because they picked it up for me. I've never seen the car, I've only seen pictures. So let's go down there, pick it up, and hope, desperately, desperately, that it's not a dog. Why, car? Why must everything be difficult? I have the key, and the car is, apparently, around the corner. He's even put it in a jaunty position for me. Of course, on this car collection caper, it is snowing, despite the fact it's bloody March. Yep. Okay. Thanks for watching. Now, we'll have a, we'll have a proper look at it. So the deal is, this is a year 2000 um, W210 E200, so it's only the four-cylinder petrol. Um, it's not a compressor model. So uh, it is 134 or 36 brake horsepower of pure rage. It's an elegant spec, so it's got chrome bits on the handles. It says elegant on the side. It's full of that leather. Um, it's a lot of car for 995 quid, that's for sure. All right, then, so let's start at the back and see what's what. So the paint is, paint is all right on that side. It's gone on that side, the lacquer's gone. But I knew that, I saw that in the pictures. These in the lights are pretty donkied so they won't replace him that one's replacing because it's cracked it's got a hole in it it's fine get that off ebay so this one's naked again it's all delaminating but we can change that easy enough this one has got a scuff on it but it's all right we'll keep that one so we'll change 75 percent of the rear lights but 25 percent tip top got a boot it's full of snow now. Got some bodies in there, I should imagine. Spare wheel. Got a got a murder t-shirt. That's always a nice thing to have. Got some, yeah, got some murder tools. So we'll put that down and got a CD changer, but not a magazine. Got a light. What more could you want? Perfect. All the panel gaps are good. I assessed that on the pictures. Because that's how you should buy a car. Just look at the pictures and go, yeah, here's some money. It's got the 16-inch uh, alloy wheels. Apparently one of these doesn't work, I don't know which one. Again, all the lacquer's gone on that wing. It's got a dent in it there, it's got some scrapes on it. Obviously this has kissed something and he's now held in with a self-tapper, which is professional. Headlight washers, they probably don't work. It's a facelift model. So on the facelifts, the bumpers came up in between the lights. Um, rather than having a separate panel here, which is what the earlier cars had, different grill as well. So the grill is sunk more into the bonnet and sticks out of the leading edge of the bonnet, whereas on the early ones it went all the way around. Headlights obviously need polishing, looking forward to doing that. So I'll look under here. Yeah, that's like an engine, but just that little bit smaller. Some water build up there, which I'm going to assume is from weather rather than anything else. We'll investigate that. Has it got coolant in it? Look. Yeah, it's got loads of coolant in it. It's fine. Absolutely fine. See a little, I think this is the M111 four cylinder engine, which looks comically small in there. You could get a small family in there. 
they could live there. That could be the kitchen, that could be the games room up there. It's sad that I'm really looking forward to cleaning that engine up, even though I'll never actually want to show it to anyone because it's a four cylinder in an E class. ABS looks like it's got air conditioning because I can see the line in the trade valve on that. It's got a hose here, it's got a belt there, it's got a red pulley opera. How's the oil looking? Yep, looks oily. That's good. You want your oil to look oily. Power steering reservoir, ABS pump. It's got all the bits you'd think a car would have. That's nice. Apparently this bonnet doesn't shut properly though, which is less nice. Maybe give it a slam, see what happens. Didn't like that, did it? We'll look at that before we set off. Yeah, so lack has gone there, which is difficult to see because it's raining now. Um, the car is actually a metallic, it doesn't look it because it's filthy and a bit tired. But it's 189 green black metallic. Um, obviously need to repair these wings, it's got scrapes and dings on it there, nothing too major though. Again, panel gaps are good, need to go clean. I think some of the seal, the gap seals there, the door's hit something there, it's got quite a dent in it. I don't know if you can see that as the light moves. Well, there's a bit of a ding there, but thousand pound car it's gonna have dings on it this is the rear quarter that needs completely painting I don't think we'll polish out but we'll give it a go um, although it, the whole panel needs paint this scuff here this unclips um, and you get those off eBay for like I think it's 45 quid for the rear one and it's 30 quid for the front one so we can do that quite easily but it's a pretty solid car Luke here at Luden has had it up in a ramp show you some pictures now of it underneath all the spring perches are good they they're notorious for rotting there but there's no rust on this car at all underneath it is rock solid like I say 90,000 miles one owner from new um, and it doesn't look like it's done a lot of traveling in winter going off the condition of it underneath it is remarkable the other thing they have had to do um, is and again I'll show you some pictures of this now they inspected the car for me when it was up on the ramp made sure everything worked and everything looks tickety-boo um, the rear brake hoses the flexes were quite badly cracked and perished so they've done that for me here saves me messing around with brakes and ABS and bleeding so they did that it was like 100 quid to put new um, flexes on it and it's just that bit of peace of mind for driving it 160 miles back to Bristol right it's still snowing and we're very cold and I think Mark behind the camera there might die soon so let's go in the car and see what we've got in there Well, hello there, my executive German friends. Welcome to my leather-lined £995 palace. It's quite nice in here. Needs a clean, but it's all right. Got full black. Fine, Corinthian. No, it's not. No car has Corinthian leather. Stop it, Chris. But I do have fine leather or pleather or something. It's nice. Get some leather restorer on there, put a bit of colour back in it and in there. Got an armrest. No car phone. I do have vents in there though, which is probably for keeping one's meal deal cool. And I've got that. I don't know what that is, but I've got it. And I've got a top ran box. Don't know what that is. Some sort of momentary switch. What's that? Is that crucial? Is the car going to make it home? Is it for this car? Where is it? So I've got that. Five speed automatic. The leather steering wheel. It's a bit. Need a bit of a haircut. Stereo radio cassette player. AM, FM. For your banging tunes. It's got EC. I don't know what that is. Is that air conditioning? Some of that. It's got hazard lights. That's nice. It's got a little bone here, just in case someone tries to steal it with a hook. Um, I've got a headlight washer button. I don't know if they work. Shall we see? Where's my, where's my key? Let's see if they work. <laughs> <laughs> they just went... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, oh, folding mirrors. Ah, they work as well. This is great. It's already worth the £995. 
I've got flappy mirrors, what work? Um, yeah, so 90,471 miles. Steering column doesn't appear to be adjustable, which is weird, you'd think that would be. Um, I've got some sticky steering wheel buttons. We'll clean them off. Yeah, headrests that flop down. Got some lights. Uh, oh, auto dimming rear view mirror. Got handles. Oh, silicon damped hand handles. Such luxury. Got a glove box. And got a lot of pepper work. And even got a token. I've got a token for me shopping. Just gets better. So then we have the service book. It's got the Vodgunschaft uh, for um, Pirelli tyres. And then the hardback E Class Owner's Manual. Cool. Nice to have a bit of paperwork with it as well. It smells faintly like cemetery flowers in your gran. But it's an old mark. I can, I can work with that. Oh. Oh. I've got. Got one of them. Some sort of vent. Where does that live? Yeah. Free vent. Some screws. A nipple. A flexible nipple. Because you need a free flexible rubber nipple when you buy a new car. Not bad. And as for it running, well, keys in. It's in park. the ref settle down. Not gonna rev its knackers off, it's cold, but sounds alright. Idles at about 900. Pretty quiet for a little four banger. And the seats are electric as well, that's worth pointing out. Because it's elegant spec. Well I think I think they all had some degree of electronic adjustment. Oh I've just now it's not got a sunroof, that's good. So it must have air conditioning. Yeah I dig it. It's nice, it's got potential. I think we could clean this up and make this into something quite, quite nice indeed. Oh, look, I've even got Mercedes-Benz mats. They'll come back around with a, uh, with a wet back and shampoo, I reckon. Get them fitted properly. Oh. Oh. Oh, if you done your lemon. There we go. It's fine. Everything's okay. So this lives down there, but on my side. Ooh, cruise control. Hey, it's got it all, this thing, you know. What? Another executive saloon to add to the collection. And, uh, yeah, more work to do, but that's why we do it. That's part of the fun. Parking lights. I mean, I'm not getting excited that it's got parking lights. It's obviously got parking lights. I was more excited about the fact it's got front fog lights. Um, only to be used when it's foggy. And the correct way to use fog lights is you use them so that people can see you as you're approaching them and then when you're in their line of sight you turn your fog lights off you don't just leave them on they can see you they're 25 yards away but that's a different rant oh it's got a rest button as well so if i'm tired i just press that and i can have a rest i assume oh that's a noise that's okay Three, four, ah. Three. there's an angry cow in the dashboard oh that wants some looking out on it Yeah, some comedy noises there, so I'll have to have a look at that. But that's fine, it's part of the discovery. This is what this is why we buy cheap cars, because bits don't work. Um, it's got a drift handbrake. I wonder if you took the ratchet mechanism off that, which is the handbrake, would it then become a fly-off handbrake? Sport mode, which is massively optimistic in a two-litre four-cylinder, as is... Um, Electronic stability program, hugely optimistic, but we'll leave it on anyway, just in case those 136 ponies try and break free. Because uh, you never know, they might. I dig it. But what are we going to do with it? That's the question. Well, first of all, fix it or fix the little things that don't work, like this bulb and the bonnet latch, which I'll come back to in a minute. We'll sort the paint out on the wings, give it a Rattle can, or I might even get a compressor and have a go at doing a proper job on it. But sort out the visual bits, make it look a bit better. And then I'm thinking, 
might go for some big wheels, might go for a little 40 millimeter suspension drop, just make it a bit cooler, maybe something, something fun, something to to look at and be like, yeah, but put together for a couple of grand tops. First thing though is going to be a full detail, well, certainly interior, engine bay, so on and so forth. I'll order up a new latch, and uh, and then we'll go from there. But first, got to get it home. So as long as it does that, it can be rewarded with new parts and love and attention and care. Uh, right, so the bonnet isn't latching down, so I've sprayed the latches with a bit of WD and then from this retaining hook here, it looks like I can, yeah, there we go, so I can wind it out a little bit and get a bit more bite on it. Or not. <clears throat> oh, it's a cable issue. Yeah, so the dash under here, where the bonnet release is, has come adrift and needs fixing back up however that happens so it's a cable issue that's stopping the bonnet not the catches although the adjustment won't hurt them yeah, the cable doesn't look too good to be honest it's a pain all it has to do is get me out if in doubt WD. work it a few times on the lever It's not latching on that side though. So it's the cable, which is quite clearly rusted up. Mm. It's not latching. I mean, I can drive it home with one, but it's really not ideal. Oh, because the engine's the size of a Cadbury's cream egg, access for dropping for dropped bolts is quite good. I wasn't planning to start working on the car today, but here we are. Has obviously seized it up. So I need to lubricate that a bit and see if we can bring a bit of life back to it. I'm obviously gonna have to replace this, but this is just for the sake of getting home. See if any of that has made a blind bit of difference. Probably not. Why don't you want to play? I just want to go home now. Now neither side. I had it then. This is infuriating now. So after the battle with the bonnet latch, which coincidentally the seller didn't mention that the bonnet didn't latch and would explain why there were no engine pictures in the listing, but that's by the by. You pay your £995, you take your chances. Um, but yeah, so the bonnet's not latching. Well, it is on that side now, but not on this side. Um, and while we have the safety of the sort of final catch, if you will, I'd rather not have this fly up and whack me in the face. So in the words of... Uh, Bear grills, improvise, adapt, overcome. So we're just going to tape it shut for the drive home and then I'll order up a new catch when I get there. And then what will happen is I'll take this tape off and I'll pull all the lacquer off the bonnet. That's a strong look right there. Yeah. That's how you know you've bought a winner. I'll be fine. <laughs> what are we talking? 24 pound suit man. Give it a good stuff. 
Now you join us pretty much two weeks later from the last scene that you just saw. We would have filmed sooner, but it hasn't stopped raining. It's still not stopped raining. And uh, as this clip shows, it's also been snowing, which was the day after I brought the car home, which was uh, less than ideal. Now, obviously the car made it back to Bristol under its own steam and did quite well. And in that time, in the two weeks, when uh, there has been a brief window of opportunity for me to tinker on it, I have done exactly that, which is why the bonnet is up. I'm gonna explain that in a minute. Now, when I picked the car up, we realized that the brake light was sticking. Mark was behind me in my Sigmax frantically flashing me to tell me that the brake light was stuck on. So the thing we found, or the thing I found earlier in the glove box was indeed a brake light switch. However, it wasn't the right brake light switch. The car came with what I assume to be a new brake light switch. So we're gonna take this out, take the old one out and pop the new one in, see if that cures the problem. And with the trim down, there is the offending article. Excuse my blurry phone camera. Well, there we go. That's why it's not been changed, because those are the wrong plugs. But at least I know what I'm looking for now, so I will go and order one of those. And now, with that remedied, the brake lights work, which conveniently also means the cruise control works as it should, because the cruise control stopped working on the way home, or worked sporadically, because the brake light was coming on and then sticking on and, uh, and killing, the, um, killing the cruise control off, which wasn't ideal, because I like cruise control. Excuse the wind there, knocking over my delicate, delicate products. What else have I done? I've cleaned the windows, I've given the car a wipe down to get some of the dirt off it, but that's about it externally. Um, I have cleaned the engine bay because I've lost all control of my life and I like cleaning engines. Um, it was quite dirty under here, as you'll see from the gratuitous um, before shots that we took on the day of collecting the car. I've not gone mad, I've not gone concourse. It's a 90,000 mile, thousand pound Mercedes Benz. But I have de-dusted it and put a bit of shine on it and made it nice. And it's not a lot of work if you want to do it yourself. This result, this before and after, is the result of these three products. There's nothing else I used. So use this AM Details all-purpose cleaner. Spray that on first. Get in there with some little brushes. I've got little nylon brushes and little detailing brushes to get into the tight spots. Obviously wipe all that down. I use the old Manol brake cleaner to get into the sort of cast area sort of around the thermostat and inside the throttle body and so on and so forth just blows that bit of dirt out um, that you can't maybe get out with a brush and then for the plastics and the overall dressing at the end just hit it with a bit of aerospace 303 there's links to all of those in the description below that's really all you need obviously a lot of microfibers um, took me a couple of hours to do it but I like doing it I like cleaning the engines I like the before and after and plus it just makes it nicer to work on I took all this stuff off like the the, the air box and the intake pipe and this front cover and clean all under there um, because it's important to clean under there what with all the people that will see it never ever again but it's clean under there I know that that's the main thing um, in terms of the bonnet obviously I had to tape the bonnet down for the journey home that was embarrassing so it wasn't the latch that was broken where the previous owner has discovered obviously that the brake light was sticking on hence them buying that incorrect brake light switch they'd taken a portion of the under dash off now as you remember earlier in the video i went in the door pocket and found that vent and found some screws it turns out the vent was from the uh, the sense console and the screws were what hold the under dash in place so i put all that back on when it was loose, it must have been putting the slightest little bit of tension on that latch. Because when I put it all back together, the bonnet shut. Because of course it did. So naturally, I've spent 30 quid on a new latch, which I'll now never use. I might just fit it just out of principle. Um, but that's about it, really. It drove back absolutely fine. Um, there's a couple more bits on it I want to do now. I want to change the headlights because they're like piss holes in the snow. Um, obviously, I need to polish them, but I'm not going to do it today in this weather. I'll do that at a later date. And I'm going to give it a vacuum out. I did the, uh, I did the Mercedes Benz mats last night with my Bissell wet vac. And I even put stripes in them. Because if you're going to clean mats on YouTube, you have to put stripes on them. Otherwise, the YouTube car police come to your house and take your car away. So what did we discover then driving the car back? Obviously, uh, driving it 160 miles, having never met it, is uh, it's not a big ask. It's a used car. You're supposed to be able to get into them and just drive them. But obviously, there was some trepidation I'm, it wasn't exactly the most detailed ebay listing it was just my idiocy going yeah i'll buy that um and they're not really thinking about anything after the facts but it was absolutely fine 
obviously we had that issue with the brake lights sticking on which wasn't ideal but it explains why screws were missing and why it had the wrong brake light switch in it um, but we've sorted that out now so um, the brake lights function as they should it's incredibly comfortable when I told people I bought it everyone said oh my god you got the two litre it's got to be slow and I said well yes it is slow but I'm not buying it to set land speed records the car drives beautifully it's it's a bit noisy getting going because the engine's a bit overwhelmed but once once you're rolling it's quiet it's sedate it's smooth the gearbox is a delight it's really smooth on the changes um, doesn't like steep hills but again two litre 130 odd horsepower it's not a it's not a race car but it drives absolutely lovely brakes are excellent thanks in no small part to having new um, new hoses on the back as I mentioned earlier steering's nice and sharp everything for the most part seems to work yeah very happy with it indeed and then of course there are the discoveries that we've made or that i've made in the couple of weeks that i've had it when i got it home on the tuesday it then snowed so the wednesday it was uh, it was under a blanket of snow so i couldn't really do a lot i've had a good look around it it's pretty straight there are some dings and chips and imperfections here or there the rear lights as i've mentioned at the start of the video on my first inspection aren't brilliant but the car is pretty solid 97 percent of it works um, i've changed that mirror glass because it was a um i mean it still is a heated one but it was auto dim a i don't like that in a in a wing mirror um, and b b the the liquid within it had bled so it looked horrible so i've changed that tank rid off ebay um, that mirror doesn't work at all it folds but it doesn't actually work um, I can't adjust it uh, the heating element doesn't work presumably um, and I've had a look at it and all the wires inside are, are cut it's obviously not malicious that would be a really really bizarre act of vandalism I'm gonna to go to the A-class and I'm gonna snip four wires um, so I'm gonna assume that it's through the mechanism of the, of the mirror folding the radio is useless so I've changed that I've now got a uh, Blaupunkt Madrid BT um, Bluetooth unit, which is chuffing great. The air conditioning works. It's so comfortable. It's so well made. Because of all the because of all the negativity against this car, like as in the 210 in general, and people say, oh they're rusty, oh they're unreliable, oh it's it's a real low spot for Mercedes. Well, okay, it's it's not an S-Class, it's not their finest hour but it's a very well made car i'm i'm really chuffed with it it's well made it's solid it feels like a mercedes should feel and it was 995 quid what more could you want obviously i've got to do the bits on the bodywork and i'll do that and i'll make it a bit nicer but uh yeah on the whole some little niggles to sort out but by and large pretty damn happy with it so there we go then, episode number two of Pollitt's Projects. First of all, thank you everyone for watching the Daimler video. I thought if a few thousand people watch it, that's a great proof of concept. And then over 50,000 of you watched it. And I gained nearly 4,000 subscribers from it. So thank you. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please do that. It helps me. It helps, helps the YouTube algorithm. Um, and it motivates me to keep making these videos. Also, if you're watching this and you're like, don't care about the Mercedes, Polly. Where's the Bend? Where's the Daimler? Where is it? Where's the big blue thing? Well, it's waiting. Waiting for parts to arrive. That's the next video. We'll get it running, and then I will reward your patience with the dulcet tones of a uh, Daimler V8 at full chat, or just idling, or maybe exploding and throwing a rod out the side of it. I don't know. I've never heard it run. But anyway, we've got this. This is another project. Not the next project. I'm going to have two going at the same time. I think that would be quite a nice thing to have going uh, a bit of variation like and with this one I think there's a nice angle in that I want to turn this not into a show car or anything like that that would be ludicrous but you know we all like a car that we can drive around in the summer we can put a bit of polish on and that looks cool and that we're proud of and that's not the reserve of people that are loaded you can do it cheaply so I've just bought a set of wheels for this, a set of staggered 18 inch wheels for 500 quid with tyres off another E-Class so I know they fit. 
I'm not telling you what they are though, you've got to wait for that. I'm going to lower it 40 mil, something like that. Tidy it up a bit, sort the body out and just have something cool to cruise around in for not a lot of money. I reckon I can put it all together for probably about 1800 quid, if not two grand top end. And that's perhaps the bedrock of what I'm trying to do here with Pollock's projects is that, you know, you can have these cars and if you're willing to get on the spanners and have a go yourself, you can have nice cars. You can, you know, you can have a bit of fun. It's not even about the nice, it's about having a bit of fun and having something that you can look back on and go, yeah, I did that, I fixed that, I rescued that, I restored that. And there's not enough of that in the world at the moment. It's too, it, people are too keen to just throw stuff away or get a new car. And, you know, I'm driving a premium top of the line car. Well, it's not an avant-garde, but nearly top of the line car for 995 quid. You know, I'm still in a Mercedes. I could have gone out and bought a brand new Hyundai i10, nothing against them, but it's not a Mercedes. Whereas this is. And it'll be a fun journey giving it a new life and making it a bit cooler. Although cool is subjective. I think it'll be cool, but then again, I'm 40 and I think I'm actually 14. So we'll see how it turns out. Maybe I'll stick a cherry bomb on it. Or a Pico Big Ball 4. Oh. Maybe I'll change the stereo for a Pioneer Dolphins. I don't know. All this and more on a future episode of Polish Projects.